Hello there, this is my boiler room stroke storage room and I'm getting somewhat fed up with storing everything on the floor. So today I'm going to be installing this IKEA Hedgeney or Hedgen shelving unit and I'm going to give you some of my top tips while we're going along. My name is Stuart Matthews and this is Proper DIY. Hedgeney, Hedgen, Hedgen. <laughs> So this shelving system comes in basic untreated pine, which obviously you can stain or paint if you really want to. The shelves that I went for are 300 millimeters deep. They do do another version that's 500 millimeters deep, which is probably more suitable if you want to store those big plastic boxes that IKEA do. But with looking at what I want to store, this is just about the right depth as well. And obviously if you make it too big, it starts encroaching in the room a little bit. So what do you get in the pack? You get uprights, the shelves, the fixings, a brace, and you also get plastic feet to go on the bottom of the uprights as well. It also comes with some of these galvanized cross braces that are quite important to stop it moving from side to side. So what I've got here is two packs of the double shelving unit. Now I don't actually want two double shelving units. What I want is a single and a triple, but I know that I can take some of this, add it to this, have a triple down here in the storeroom that leaves me with enough material to have a single upstairs in the airing cupboard for towels and duvet covers and, and what have you. So it's probably worth saying that this is actually an extendable system. As long as you keep buying the packs, you can extend this all around a room or a garage or a shed or whatever. The only thing I would say about putting it outside in a shed or a garage is obviously this is untreated timber. So I would recommend staining it or painting it and giving it some sort of protection from the moisture that you might get outside. I think it's time that we unpacked some of this and started putting it together. Each one of these shelving packs of two shelves comes with instructions and fixings, all stuck to the shelves with a large blob of glue, which was a bit of a pain to remove. Unpacking everything took longer than I expected, especially removing the IKEA stickers from each component, which is definitely best done at this point in the build. The fixing pack contains eight screws, one for each corner of each shelf, and a small Allen key to fix them, so you do end up with an awful lot of Allen keys. As soon as the build starts, essentially you've already decided the position of the shelves. Although in theory they can be adjusted at a later date, in reality not many people will ever go back to do this. So my top tip number one is to think really carefully about what you intend to use the shelves for, and therefore the shelf spacing and their positions before the first screw even goes in. So, so far I've only partially done up five bolts and my fingers are already starting to get red raw because I've been using this little Allen key that they give you. Now if you're lucky enough to have a set like this where you can find an Allen key that goes into your cordless drill that's exactly the same size, then that's going to speed up the process an awful lot. But most people won't have a set like this. But what you do have is that in each one of these packs of screws, you have one of these Allen keys. So my top tip number two is we're now going to modify this and use this in our cordless drill. This is a little trick I learned from some removal men a few years ago who had to disassemble some of my furniture. It's not perfect, but when you have dozens of screws to tighten, I have around about 60 here, any help you can get in placing them, your fingers will appreciate. So I've now got one of the three units screwed together with the shelves on, but because it's got no bracing, we've got a bit of a structural problem. You don't want to put any load on that at the moment because very quickly it's going to end up on the floor. And this is where this galvanized frame that 
IKEA give you comes into play. This gets screwed on the back and because it's triangular it will give this huge rigidity left and right and make sure that nothing falls over. Now I only need one of these for the three units because this middle one is going to be strong enough to support the, the others. Now it's important before this goes on that you make sure that this is square and vertical and there's two ways of doing that. One way is to put this in its final position and then this screw this on. Now the challenge with that is that this has to be screwed on the back so when it's in the final position it's difficult to get to the back and then most people screw it on the front which is fine but then when you flip it 180 you can actually exaggerate any problems with the uh, how level the floor is. The other and the better way of doing it is putting this on the floor again measuring diagonal making sure that these diagonals are the same which means it's all square then screwing this on and that's the system that I'm going to be using. <laughs> So I've got the shelves on, all the bolts are tightened up, the cross bracing is on, which means there's no movement left and right, and it's actually in its final position. So the only last thing I need to do is to screw it securely to the wall. Now you may not think you need to secure it to the wall, and structurally you don't need to. You could load this up and walk away from it, it's never going to collapse. However, at some point in the future, there may be a, an occasion where if you try to drag something off, it comes away from the wall, or more importantly, someone a lot younger than me may look at this and think this looks like a really good ladder and start climbing up here, get two thirds of the way up and everything falls over, which is a really quite nasty safety issue. So IKEA have always suggested that these sort of things and shelves get screwed to the wall and I would absolutely agree with them as well. And once upon a time, they used to give brackets like this that you used to put on the top and screw in. But I notice in the instructions now they suggest using screws which they don't actually provide so this is one of mine through one of the redundant holes in the uprights straight into the wall. Now it doesn't actually matter it doesn't take that much to secure it to the wall and it might save quite a nasty accident later so that's the last thing I've got to do. <laughs> So here it is, fully complete, loaded up and screwed to the wall and all secure. So just a couple of comments about the placement of shelves as well. The very lowest shelf I've raised around about 150 mil off the floor so I can actually sweep and clean underneath. If you put it on the very lowest setting you can't actually get under anything under there to clean and in some ways you don't even need that shelf because you can actually put stuff on the floor. That's really up to you. Secondly I've left a big gap here and a big gap here for things that are oversized. I don't really know how that's going to work out. What I'll do is I'll use it for a couple of weeks and then come back and if I have to adjust it, if I have to put some more shelves in which you can actually buy individually from Ikea or take some out or move them that's just what I'll have to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel, which are DIY projects all around the house and garden. And if you're feeling really brave, please hit subscribe. So from a fully fitted and very sturdy shelf, and I just realized 
This very much makes me look like an alcoholic. See you next time. Thank you.